God Hits. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, today I want to talk to you about believing in places where you have been rejected. It's important for me to share this message because I know the last couple years, almost three years now, just at large for majority of the world have been very hard. We have had a lot of pressure. We faced a lot of very jarring and unexpected situations. A lot of people have incurred a lot of death, loss. You know, we've gone through this hor uh, horrific pandemic and such, and we're still going through the aftermath of a lot of these things. And you will find that rejection has taken root in a lot of people. We've noticed that a lot of people have been questioning their lives and their existence because of all of the things that are happening outside of us. But I'm talking about not only those things happening, but now many have been grappling with things on the inside. There's some of you who were going to attempt things before the pandemic hit and you were rejected. You were just building up your confidence to do it again and then boom, the pandemic hit again. And then you feel like you're back on that loop-de-loop -loop all over again. But what you have to understand is the door is opening back up for you to begin to believe in your broken places, believe in your places of rejection. It is not your lot in life to be a winner at a losing game. It is not your lot in life to make rejection your beacon of light and hope and not the thing that God called you to do and not the thing that God called you to be. You have to learn how to believe Again, you have to believe in your place of rejection. So as you can see, I told y'all some months back that I was going to be posting this, but the name of this thing today is 50 Rejection Letters. And if you see on the cover, there's a book there. So my brother would always buy me these really cool books. And back in the day, y'all, like before we got heavy into the internet, I'm not that old, but you know, I kind of was on a cusp where I experienced the internet, social media back in college and an email address and all of that. And all of that was popping when I was still in college, I was getting out. So I still, you know, I was kind of like right on the cusp between, you know, them still having dictionaries and encyclopedias, but I was still in the place where we was coming into beepers and cell phones and emails and things like that. Right. So one of the things that really affected me when I first started my journey as a writer trying to see like how God wanted me to move with this thing was I got the book that my brother gifted me and I went to uh, Office Depot and I bought uh, the box of like 11 envelopes. I mean, excuse me, of 100 envelopes. I think, yeah, they sell them like 100 in a pack. And I bought like a bunch of uh, paper. I got to the computer I started writing out things, typing out letters. In fact, at the time, I don't think, it, yeah, I might have used a typewriter. No, it was a computer. I used a computer, got to the printer, started typing everything out, writing these letters. And what I did was I found all of the different poems and all of the different writings and things that I had. And I picked the best ones for each publication. So what I did was I committed. Y'all know I'm the same way I've always been. I'm organized. I like to have things done, but y'all know I do that as a free spirit. But I still like a little organization in my being free spirited, right? So y'all see how I, I do my, my, my imagery, how I set things up. Y'all see I'll be posting it ahead of time. I've always been like that. So imagine when I did that and I said, okay, I'm going to do 50. That was just the number I picked and I went with 50. So basically I decided, okay, I'm going to do these letters or whatever. And so I started like hitting everybody up, sending everything out. And y'all, it was so interesting because by this point, I was so just elated and so excited that there was an opportunity for me to get feedback saying, hey girl, you got your stuff published, right? Well, let's just say this. By the time we got down to my, my responses and my letters, everybody told me no. I think that's, you know, 50 rejection letters. But what I realized was when I got to the second to last letter that I that I had received in response, it basically told me, hey, listen, we like your stuff. We're going to circle back to you and let you know what we're going to do. I was elated. I called my brother. I called my best friend. I was like, oh, my God, y'all, this is awesome. They're going to post me. You're going to let me know. Well, how about 
they sent me another letter and said, you know, our bad, we're not going to be able to publish you. So I was devastated. So what y'all have to understand is this. I was faced with a task right then and there. I had to determine if I was going to let the N.O. completely stop me and turn me off or if I was going to let the N.O. turn into the O.N. and switch the letters and let it turn me on. Let it let it be a a a a, a guiding post for me to say, although I've been getting all these no's, I could let this rejection make me a woman that's more resilient or I can be a person who crumbles. Ever since then, that is when I think I started to develop not only resilience, but that's when I became known as a very persistent person. That is when I zeroed in on different goals and dreams that I had. And I made sure whenever I got a check in my spirit, whenever God told me to pursue something or to align myself with someone and not from no motive, not from no mischief, not from no, oh, I'm going to try to get this from him. I'm going to try to get this from her. No, when I really felt in my spirit, God was saying, no, you need to connect with them i would stick to that until it happened and that would be the word i remember I, this has happened to me so many times and it ended up being one of the greatest compliments of my adult life they were like girl you are persistent and i would i, I prefer persistent more than aggressive because again when you're young and you're figuring out your personality i don't know how how any of you are but sometimes when you're figuring out what your personality is you have to learn how to, to graduate from maybe being aggressive to assertiveness, right? Or maybe if you're a naturally introverted person, but a lot of what you require may, dis, may, may call for you to be more of an extrovert, you learn how to make a balance between the two. You learn how to maybe network in a way that's more conducive to your personality. But you do find a way to evolve and stretch because there's not necessarily things that are wrong with some of those things, but sometimes when you hone them and you work on them from another vantage point, it can genuinely change your life and it can make things easier for you so once i decided y'all after all of those rejection letters that that's not that wasn't going to be my end all be all and that wasn't going to be the thing that i got stuck on i made a decision and the reason why i wanted to bring this up to y'all is because some of you are stuck in a place when i decided to hit on you sat with no you are still sitting with your no and your rejection now let me give you full disclosure disclosure there have been times and seasons where i did get stuck on that no so i don't want you to think for a minute that i have not had my bouts with that because i have but what i also want you to understand is this one man's no is another man's yes and just because somebody tells you no, that does not mean what you are presenting is inadequate. And I'm specifically talking to people who have done the work. You have done physical labor, be it smart work or hard work or whatever type of work. You did it honestly and you did it so that you can get ahead in your career and in your life. And you are trying to follow the things that God is telling you. How many of you have felt like God has given you a directive and you did it and it blew up in your face? Let me tell you something. I thought that when God was leading me to continue with writing those letters and, 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 and putting myself in a position for these people to constantly tell me no, I was under the silly impression that because God told me to do it, that everything was going to be great. And just because he told me to submit the letters and to submit the request, that meant that they were going to tell me yes. Well, baby, the joke was on me when I figured out. He was like, girl, I did not tell you to do that for that reason. I told you to do that because I was trying to build something in you in my smart butt. Well, you couldn't have built me up another way instead of making everybody tell me no. <laughs> it was so interesting to be in that space and I was so pure in my intention. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was purely trying to approach that thing from a level of, oh, yeah, I got this. And again, these are the types of spaces where God will work on your temperament. He will work on your ego. He will work on your humility. He will work on things in you to try to get you together. Y'all thought that was it? We, I'm going to do a whole other video on my songwriting journey. The no's and the rejection I got with that. Y'all just don't understand. God had to literally plant people in my circle and in my life who, when I would call crying, saying, I can't believe they did that to me. And they would just go crazy. Like, no, like da, 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 that ain't what that is. And you don't need to worry about that. It's like God knew what he was doing when he was developing me in that area. And the reason why I felt led to share this with some of you is because I believe you are going through the same thing. Do not get stuck in losing your belief because you are mounted and you are you are posted up on rejection. Get yourself off of that mount. Get yourself out of that space. 
rejection is not your portion. I hear this all the time. Rejection is your redirection. That might be true. But guess what rejection is also? Rejection is also an indicator that you are human being, but it's also an indicator that guess what? You have put yourself in a position that a lot of people don't put themselves in. You took a chance, man. Sometimes it's not even talking about the redirection. Do you realize if you are even feeling some type of rejection that it's just saying that you had enough heart to try something, be it a relationship, be it a, a trying out for a job, creating something, moving somewhere. Maybe it didn't work out like you thought, but man, they got people that's so busy talking about it that they're not being about it. They're got, they have people out here right now who wish that they could do what you're doing. They got people right now looking at you saying, ha, 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 she got rejected. Ha, 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 that blew up in her face. That blew up in his face, but they don't even have what it takes to go ahead and at least try it. Because one thing I could tell you, is this, when God chooses people, Bishop Brown would say this to the us all the time. When God chooses people, he chooses people that are busy. He chooses people that are already working. Some of my best opportunities came because people always knew I was working on something. Whether they knew what it was or not, they knew who I was at my core. And I want to extend that to you. You might not be in a place where you can understand and feel like, oh, this is redirection. You might not be there yet. But one thing I can tell you is this, you are absolutely in the place of knowing that if you have experienced some type of rejection that's a badge of honor because that means that you were willing to put yourself in some type of situation and you took the lick and you took the l and it only means that it made you stronger for the thing that is yours for the thing that will not reject you so I want you to hold your hope and I want you to understand something. God is no respecter of persons. So don't start looking at everybody else that you feel, well, God didn't reject them or they got somebody. I didn't get somebody or they kept this and I didn't keep that. Go ahead and dead that right now because that is not your portion. And moreover, it is none of your concern. You concern yourself with knowing this. When God has something for you, my dear, he is going to give it to you. And if you have felt rejection, I want you to lick your wounds, stand up, turn that no, turn Turn it on and you keep it moving because rejection is not just about redirection, but it is a sign of strength and it is a sign that you are willing to throw yourself in that water. Even if you wasn't the best swimmer, you threw yourself in that water and it don't matter what happened. You kept working. You kept trying to figure it out and maybe it did not work out to your benefit, but guess what? At least you could say it's a badge of honor. They got people that didn't even try what I did. At least I tried. It hurt my feelings. I still might be, be building up from it now, but maybe I got divorced, but I'm going to try love again. Maybe those pers those people cut me off, but God going to bring me some new people. Maybe I tried to get the job and they fired me, but guess what? I know I got the chops. Maybe I wanted that song to hit, but no, they didn't like it. Somebody going to like the song. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Don't let your stuff hinge on some rejection that's designed to make you feel crazy when God designed it to give you strength. And also, the best part about rejection, rejection uh, takes you back to the Father. Rejection makes you go back to the Lord, even if you have questions, but it reminds you who your creator is. And it reminds you that just because you have rejection, it does not mean that you are not under God's protection. Do not ever forget that. I hope that that encouraged you. And I hope that you know, it does not matter how many times that you have been rejected. It is not your lot in life to be a winner at a losing game. And God will continue to work on you and open doors as long as you keep trying. Do not lose your belief in the place where your heart was broken. Do not lose your belief in the place where you got the rejection. Do not lose your belief in a place where it did not work out in the way that you thought. You trust God for bigger, better, and greater. And I can promise you, that is something that you will not regret. regret. Make sure you like, you share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. I appreciate y'all. Stay tuned for more. I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too.